This quick video is going through the very basics of force calculations. Now the first thing that you probably know about forces from other subjects is the equation force equals mass times acceleration. Now this force calculation is used a lot in engineering studies for instance and excuse my drawing but if you've got a car traveling uh, in one direction it has a mass say for instance of 50 kilograms and has an acceleration of let's say 20 meters per second we can say that if that car was to hit a wall or to hit a person that particular car would be hitting them with a force of 50 times 20 which is equal to 1000 newtons or 1 kilonewton so that's a simple way that we can use force equals mass times acceleration. Another way we can use force equals mass times acceleration is for a person. So let's say a girl is standing on a new set of scales and she is wanting to measure how much force she is applying to that set of scales. Let's say for instance her mass was 60 kilograms we use gravitation here on Earth, which is approximately 10 meters per second. So therefore, her force being equal to mass times acceleration would equal 60 times 10, which is equal to 600 newtons. So we would say that is her weight and her mass is 60 kilograms. There's a very big difference between mass and weight in engineering studies. Now, once we understand that, we must understand that a second rule, and this is a rule you might have heard, but for every force there is an equal and opposite reaction force. So what we're saying, for instance, in the example of a girl standing on a set of scales, there she is, smiling, is that this set of scale effectively is sitting on the ground and her force of 600 newtons is acting downwards. In order for her to be standing and not to be moving downwards, the ground must be giving some sort of opposite reaction force which is exactly equal to her weight force. This force is often prescripted with an R because it is a reaction force. If it wasn't for this reaction force, her weight force would cause the girl and the set of scales to travel down through the ground. This reaction force keeps the system in equilibrium. When a system is in equilibrium, basically we're saying there is no resultant movement or no resultant action because of that whole system. So in this example, a girl standing on a set of scales, there is no final movement. She's standing dead still, therefore there is no resultant. The word resultant... is something we commonly use as what is the total effect of all the forces in our system. So if we had one person pushing this way and another person pushing this way, another person pushing this way and another person pushing this way, let's say with 5 newtons and 5 newtons and 10 newtons and 10 newtons, you can see in the system that all these forces cancel each other out. So ultimately my result is zero newtons because a resultant force of zero newtons exists in the system and therefore the system is in equilibrium. If this person started pushing with a force of six newtons and this person continued to push with a force of five newtons the whole system would start accelerating towards the right because we'd have a force of 6 newtons pushing it off to the right hand side and in that case we had to have a resultant force in the right hand direction of 1 newton 
So the concepts of force being equal to mass time acceleration, the concept of a reaction force being equal and opposite to a force applied by a person, and the concept of equilibrium and resultant forces is key to your understanding how to go about calculating forces in engineering studies.